on this episode of Bondi Vet. Oh, my goodness. Can I have it help a young Labrador pup with a bizarre alien lump growing under her tongue? It can affect her breathing, making it a very serious situation. The force that Princess must have been hit with, it had to be huge. Chris races to save a hit-run victim at the Cook Islands' only veterinary clinic. There is only so much we can do with limited resources and limited equipment. She's already lost this cat once, and this time round I know that she has a sense that she might lose him again. And Scott performs a risky surgery on a cherished family pet. His heart rate is slow. Yeah, it's keeping me on my toes, that's for sure. Come on, there's your girl. Nova, yes. In Atlanta, Georgia, an anxious Nova is waiting to see Arvid with her family, James, Skylar and Chandler. Hey, you want to go home, don't you? Hey, good morning. Hey, good How morning. you doing? Well. Dr. Edward. Jamie. Nice, Jamie to Marshall, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. This is Nova? This is yeah. Nova. Nova. How you doing? She's like, oh my gosh, yeah, what's going been, on? I already know. <laughs> The nine-month-old Labrador has been brought in after her owners noticed a strange lump growing inside her mouth. It was like a little, little bubble in her mouth. It was like a marble size and then it grew to like a kiwi size. You can see it protruding underneath, underneath there. there. Oh yeah, yeah, you can feel it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Tell you what, okay. what we're going to do, we're going to get her on the table here. Okay. And I'm going to get one of my assistants to help me hold. And I'm just looking that mouth a little bit more. Okay. There we go. Good girl. Over here. It's okay. Nova, 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 Nova. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay to be scared. I know. I know. There you go, girl. Wow. Good girl. Yeah, you can definitely see the big bubble right yeah. here. Yeah, that's. That's pretty big. Yeah. That's pretty big. So as I'm looking under the tongue and I see this large, soft structure, I immediately knew that we were dealing with the salivary mucosil. What that means is that the saliva has formed in a pocket of this tissue. That results from a damaged or a torn salivary duct that's coming from the salivary gland. Okay, all right. Okay. It can happen on, in a number of cases like a choke collar, like if you have a choke collar on her and she's constantly pulling, right. that can cause a damage or a rupture. A foreign body, like chewing on a stick or a toy. So you does. say, that's probably what that's it probably is. probably what it is. That's probably I'm, what I'm it sure is. that's probably what it is because she puts everything in her mouth. So this salivary mucosil that's in Nova's mouth needs to be addressed and it needs to be addressed immediately because these mucosils can get very large and occlude the airways making it a respiratory distress. If that happens, it can become a life-threatening situation. Okay. Okay. We don't want to get there. Definitely not, definitely not. I know my dog's gonna be fine. The dog's gonna take good care of her. That's my pup. So we don't want Nova in any more pain or discomfort than she needs to be, which is why I'm gonna go ahead, get her in surgery today, and get this salivary mucosil taken care of. All right, see you, girl. Let's see. Oh, my goodness. You see that? And all that is just full of saliva. We need to get that thing out of there. What were you chewing on, huh? You're not going to tell me? I don't know. You're not going to tell me? Doing surgeries on pets like this is very rewarding. But in Nova's case, <laughs> because she's so stinking cute. That's another reason why I'm glad I'm able to help her. Don't get me wrong, if she wasn't stinking cute, I'd still help her. But she is stinking cute. <laughs> All right. All right, we're gonna make you feel better. 
Yeah. Make you feel better. But before the much needed surgery can start, there's a problem with the anaesthetic. Check that too. Once the initial tracheal tube was in Nova, she kept waking up. It's a bad tube. I could definitely hear a defect, almost like there was a hole in it. We have a defective tube. Putting another trach tube in. Okay, close. We got a new one in. Everything's good. So here you can see the mass right in her lower jaw region. Yeah, this thing is getting big. It looks like it's getting big by the minute. The surgery involves two parts. First, Arvid must remove the salivary gland from Nova's lower jaw. About to make my incision. The problem is that it's really close to the jugular vein. So you gotta be really careful because you don't want to cut the jugular vein. As I'm in there trying to get the salivary gland out, I see the jugular vein right to the side of it. And I knew that I had to be very careful. Just taking your time, and working your way down. If I was to cut that jugular vein, that could be game over for Nova. We are getting there. You can see the gland is just starting to work its way out of here. And there's the gland and the duct. The next step is to take out the saliva-filled bubble under her tongue. Can you go ahead and hook that up, suction up for me? Yes. I'm gonna make an incision into the bubble, if you will, and I'm gonna suture or stitch the areas of the tissue to the sides of the walls in her mouth. And that's gonna leave that mucosil or that bubble open and it's gonna heal from within. The tongue is a very vascular area, which means it bleeds a lot. As I get in her mouth and look under that tongue, I still can't believe that she was walking around, eating, drinking, playing with this large mucosil under her tongue. So we're gonna throw one more suture in and then I'll be all done. Now that the surgery's over, it's time to recover Nova, get her up and ready to go so she can go home and be with her family tonight. So my dad and my sister were pretty busy, so I came to get my dog over. So hopefully she's doing well after the, um, the surgery, so I'm really excited to get her when she comes back. Always want them to look nice before they go home. Here comes Nova. This way, this way, right here. How you doing? You got the cone on your head? <laughs> Surgery went well, no complications, went pretty straightforward. And when I leave that cone on, pretty much till the sutures come out. Okay. You're going to live your normal life now. Yeah? <laughs> I know. The surgery was a success. Nova's gonna heal up and go on to live a normal life just as long as she leaves those sticks alone. Now, while this seems like the perfect place for a holiday, I've got a feeling this is going to be no vacation. Chris has flown 5,000 kilometres to the exotic South Pacific, but he won't have time to enjoy the sights. You see, there is only one vet clinic here, and they service an area of islands that spread out over a patch of ocean bigger than the size of Australia, so I'm guessing they're going to need a hand. Chris is headed straight to Rarotonga and the Esther Honey Foundation, which cares for the island's sick and injured animals. I know, I know. The clinic was set up 30 years ago and relies entirely on donations and volunteers. Hello. You the boss around here? Hello. Hello. 
Hi. How are you going? I'm Chris. Chris? Amy, nice to meet you. Good to see you, Amy. Here to help. That's spectacular. <laughs> You're excited about that? I am. Always excited about more help. Since we do always have a full house at the Esther Honey Foundation, having extra sets of hands and, and extra help is always appreciated and takes a little bit of the burden off of us. Consultations happen in there. Yeah. Got our feeding and uh, laundry in there. Over here, surgery and x-ray. All right. I've only had a quick look around, but already I can see the conditions are pretty basic. <laughs> There's one consultation room and very limited medication and equipment. Yet somehow, these guys are on the front line when it comes to helping out the sick and injured animals of the Cook Islands. Thank you. I'll put my box down. Yeah, do that. We'll get started. Sounds good. Minutes later, the first emergency call comes in. Got your gear? Yep. All right. Let's go. An animal has been found injured after a hit-run accident. Looks like a puppy's been hit by a car, so we're just going to go see what we can do to, to help that little dog out. So this is pretty typical of what happens around here, I guess, with dogs not having fences and... Uh, yeah, it is pretty typical. It's also relatively typical that we, we need to go out and collect them, because, as you're seeing now, most of the people just have motorbikes. To be honest, as I'm arriving with Amy, I am expecting the worst. The cars on this road move quickly. So, the outcome surely can't be good. Hi. Hello there. Hi. How are you going? So what happened? She's been hit by a car. She's been hit by a car. I was telling her to get up. But she lay there and her eyes were looking at me. All right, so we'll just check her out now and just have a little look over her. Obviously, the, the, a lot of the pain is down the, the back part here, but we'll just start at the front. Even though Princess is moving around, the concern is always internal injuries. If she has something serious in there, like a bleed, she could have minutes to live. It's OK. No, no, no. So I just want to make sure that in the accident she hasn't done something to her lungs and just make sure her lungs are inflating properly. It looks like she's breathing fairly normally. Even though Princess has been up and has been moving around, the fact is she's not out of danger yet. The force that Princess must have been hit with had to be quite substantial. So you can see she's whimpering when I move around her hip here. So that seems to be the sorest spot of all, is just up in the upper part of her leg. <laughs> Isn't very comfortable for her. The obvious concern for me is that Princess has a really nasty fracture of either her femur or her pelvis. If either is the case, the consequences for her could be incredibly serious. I think the best thing to do is take her back to the vet clinic for an x-ray, and then from there the best thing we'll be able to do is, is work out exactly how severe her injuries are and, and what she needs from there. OK. OK? That sound all right with you? Owner Mary and her niece Stephanie will be devastated if they lose their much-loved princess. I'll do anything just to keep her on her feet and make sure she's all right. As long as she comes back and she's fine, that's what matters the most. OK, so we'll talk to you soon. Yep, thank you. OK, no problem. At the back of my mind throughout all of this has been the fact that the Cook Islands doesn't exactly overflow with orthopaedic surgeons or orthopaedic equipment. Thank See you soon. If we do have quite a serious injury here, then I'm not sure exactly what we can do for it. Oh, where's X-ray? Yeah, X-ray's down here to the right. Take her right in. Back at the Esther Honey Foundation, Chris and Amy are about to X-ray hit run victim Princess. Yeah, hey, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay, it's all right. Chris is concerned the young pup may have sustained extensive injuries to her pelvis. The force that Princess must have been hit with, it had to be huge. Her body can only sustain so much, so I'm expecting her injuries, unfortunately, to be substantial. She's a tough little thing, isn't she? Yeah. You're hit by a car and then try, <laughs> try to run away. Uh, yeah, most island dogs are pretty tough. We do have quite a few uh, three-legged dogs here in the Cook Islands, and that is mostly due to hit by car or road traffic accident. Uh, because of the free wandering lifestyle that they have, they oftentimes cross the road, and sometimes they're smarter than other times. Sometimes they look, sometimes they don't. Chris is hoping an injection of painkillers will help calm the distressed pup. Here we go. You don't have to play the tough girl anymore. Mm. There's really no way of knowing what we're going to find in these x-rays. Most of the princess's pain is in the upper part of the leg, so obviously the focus has to be there. One, two, three, go. Okay. Thank you. 
All right. So you can take those up, get those developed. Uh, in the meantime, we'll put her in a cage so she can rest. Mm -hmm. If we see quite severe damage on these x-rays, there is only so much we can do. With limited resources and limited equipment, orthopaedic surgery here is a very rare event. So, worst case scenario, she may need to lose that leg. Just take it easier. I'll have those results for you soon. So the human hospital's okay with four-legged x-rays as opposed to two? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. We, um, they let us use their developer and we just bring a disc and burn our radiographs on there, so we're not taking up any of their uh, space. It's a, it's a real community thing around here, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it really is, it really is. Chris is quickly realising how tough it is to care for the local animals. This is it? Yep. He's just had to make an emergency dash to the nearby hospital, the only place with facilities to process Princess's x-rays. The fact is, if we see a really, really bad fracture here, there's nothing even a human hospital could do for Princess on this island. Wow. Didn't expect that. No. She has just somehow taken a hit. Moved on. And moved on. The femur is very much intact, going to the head of the femur, into the pelvis. It's really... Looks really good. No problems there at all. No. Which is quite remarkable. So we'll just have a look at the other view just to make sure. I mean, going from the, the knees right up to the, the pelvis here, she was whimpering when we touched those areas and, and flexed them. Yeah. But it looks like it's just all been soft tissue, just bruising really. Yeah. You do assume that just to survive around here, the dogs have to be, I guess, tougher than your average dog. And Princess, despite her name, is clearly no different. She somehow managed to, whilst crossing that road, see that car at the last minute, take the impact and walk away without any fractures. What do you reckon? Is she gonna be okay? I think she's gonna be fine. Yeah. Hey. You don't know how to look sore, do you? Come on. See you walk. Can you get up? Can you get up for us? Oh, don't take off there. There's not a lot of limping going on anymore. Little, little. <laughs> Just a little, little one. Tender, but pretty good. Can I see you walk. Hey. Princess's prognosis is actually a lot better than we thought when we first saw her. So bumps and bruises, nothing catastrophic, and she can go home with some pain medicine, rest, and recovery. Really lucky dog. Oh. <laughs> That's a catch. Nice catch. <laughs> After all the panic of earlier, now it really comes the nice part. I'm sure Mary and her daughter are sitting at home worrying about what's happened to Princess. We can give them the good news. <laughs> what is it with you jumping? <laughs> As I'm carrying Princess towards Mary and Stephanie, the look they give her is just one of absolute relief. They're overjoyed to see her again and just happy to have her home. Uh, she's she's yeah. excited. She's <laughs> excited, yeah. Hi, you Princess. So she's still a little sore, which is to be expected. And she's going to have a bit of bruising there for the next few days. Um, but considering what she could have been facing, yeah. it's, um, it's a very, very good result. <laughs> I'm just grateful enough that you have saved her and brought her back and nothing has happened to her. Well, you're beautiful people and I can see how much she clearly means to you and how much you mean to her, considering that tail hasn't stopped wagging you know, the whole time. <laughs> we are grateful to well, both of you. Well, it's great that the whole Esther Honey Foundation mm -hmm. exists, isn't it? It's going to be hard to forget my first patient in the Cook Islands, but really she's demonstrated perfectly exactly the role these pets have in everyday life. They're part of the community, they're part of family, and they mean the world to these guys. Well then, you go first. At home in Isleworth, southwest London, one of Scott's long-term patients, Domino, is enjoying some fun and games with the family. Domino's 15 years old, and we got him when he was six, eight weeks old. My dad arrived with a cat carrier with two kittens inside, and he said he had a present, one each for his grandchildren. They fell in love with them. I couldn't say no. 
and we ended up with Domino and Licorice. <laughs> but while Licorice likes his own space, Domino loves being the centre of attention. Good boy! He's very spoiled, and I think he thinks that he is a human rather than a cat. Domino, no! But six months ago, Domino suddenly became ill. He went from being a really big, chunky, fat cat to a complete bag of bones within two weeks. And we were frightened to go to the vets because we thought they're going to put him down. What's that, mate? Blood tests revealed Domino has a condition common in older cats, known as hypothyroidism. You're having a little massage, like a little massage. One of his two thyroid glands is overproducing a hormone called thyroxin. The excessive hormone pushes up his metabolism, causing extreme weight loss. Tommy no. Sometimes. The elderly cat has now been on medication for five months. In it goes. Come on, it has to go in. I hate giving Domino his medication. Domino hates me giving him his medication. He hides. He will spit the tablets out if he can. No, don't bite my fingers. If that wasn't bad enough, recent tests show he's not responding to the medication. There's a good boy. I know you don't like it. Scott has now told the family Domino needs surgery to remove the abnormal thyroid gland. But there are serious risks involved in a 15-year-old cat going under a general anaesthetic. I'm hoping for Domino to come out the other side and, and be happy and healthy um, and, and get back to his normal self. But we don't know if that's going to happen. The family will have one last night of cuddles before Domino's big surgery tomorrow. Oh, is that nice? He likes that. Yes. Hello. Hello. How are you? We're good. Here Hello. he is. Good. Next day at Scott's Isleworth practice, it's time for Domino's thyroid surgery. You're going to come out and see us? Domino has a very classic condition of older cats here in the UK, which is hyperthyroidism, an overactive thyroid gland. Uh, basically, a benign type of tumour grows on the gland and then increases its production of thyroid hormone. When the abnormal thyroid gland is removed, it should reduce Domino's hormone levels and allow him to feel good again and start putting on weight. How are you feeling about it? Your eyes? A little bit nervous, but, you know, looking forward to it at the same time. Yeah, he doesn't seem nervous at all, though, does He's he? He's not, no. Seems pretty chilled. Tracy is understandably nervous about being separated from Domino. When Domino was 18 months old, he just disappeared. I was really upset during that time. The children were very upset. And it was difficult for them because they were so young, they couldn't understand why he'd run away from home. But to the family's amazement, after three long months, Domino had been found, 70 miles away in Seaside, Brighton. And he went all this way, look, right on the seafront. It was unbelievable. I was extremely happy, but absolutely in shock at the same time. I didn't think I was going to see him again. Oh, Doms, I love you. You're my mate, aren't you? I feel like he was supposed to be with us, and now he's sick. I have to do everything I can for him because the bond between us is just so strong. I'm off because I'm going to get upset. I'll see you later. See you Bye. later, Trace. All right, Bye, have a Trace. good day. Bye. Bye. Thank you. You can tell with Tracy that there's real deep-seated emotion here. She's already lost this cat once, and this time round, I know that she has a sense that she might lose him again. Yeah, it's weird to think you're going to lose your thyroid gland, but it will help because at the moment it's just behaving badly. So we just need to take it out and go home to mummy without nasty tablets every day. Head nurse Emma is assisting Scott. Good boy. Good boy. Scratch. Good. And they're both very impressed with just how easygoing their 15-year-old patient is. Such a gent, isn't he? He's mm -hmm. such a chap for his age as well. He's certainly not doing that cantankerous old man thing, which, quite frankly, I'm quite Definitely. looking forward to doing. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I can't You're wait. You're bad enough on a good day. Can you just... Oh, I'm very wow. chipper, but I'm looking forward to being a grumpy old man. I think that'd be actually quite fun. <laughs> Jokes aside, 
Domino's age could pose serious problems for the anaesthetic. I'm really glad that I've got Emma, my head nurse today, here with me because she's the most experienced nurse that I have. And in these cases where you've got an older cat that has lost a significant amount of condition over the last few months, they are going to be an anaesthetic risk. There's no doubt about that. I do basically have to keep Domino alive. That is my job. I'm the anaesthetist. So if anything goes wrong, it's on me. How are we getting on? Well, he's bradycardic and his blood pressure is quite low. Okay. Um, so no pressure, but quick as can. I'm just I'm nervous. It's a bit of a tricky anaesthetic, I'm not going to lie. His heart rate is a little bit slow. His blood pressure is much lower than I would like it. Yeah, it's keeping me on my toes, that's for sure. Trainee nurse Gemma has been called in to help Emma if required. Nice, healthy white nerve there. I'm going to avoid that like the plague. Scott is also feeling the pressure. There's some huge nerves that do very important things, controlling everything from the ability to swallow to the ability to move your tongue, even the ability to move your neck. So really, really important nerves there, and you definitely don't want to cut any of those. There you are. There's the gland there. So at either end, I can see a nice, clear parathyroid gland. And in the middle there is the thyroid gland, which I'm going to remove. So what we're talking here is a matter of millimetres between what is abnormal thyroid tissue and what is healthy parathyroid tissue. So um, I do need to make sure that I place the ligatures in the right spot and take out all of this gland, otherwise it will simply just grow back. You're sort of pretty happy with the cat now, James? Yeah, it's stable, but it's keeping me on my toes. OK, so that's one abnormal thyroid gland. So this has come out nice and yep. cleanly, and I'm ready to close. Cats have two separate thyroid glands. Domino's remaining gland is healthy and will now control his metabolism hopefully eliminating the need for any further medication. And we are done. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Never been so happy to finish surgery with yeah. you. <laughs> A relief to get this boy woken up. Yes. yes. Come on then. Back you come. You've been back to Brighton in your dreams, eh? Walks on the beach. Yeah. Welcome back, buddy. Minus one pesky thyroid gland, eh? Never been so happy to have a cat wake up so quickly. Yeah, good boy, Domino. Well done. Surgery went really well. The gland was abnormal looking, uh, but I feel that I got it out completely. Oh, what a nice, cosy bed. Mm -hmm. Snuggly. Emma was just happy it was over. She was happy she could wake up her cat and have her patient alive and breathing in front of her. So thankfully, we were both happy with the result. I want to get in and snuggle with him. It's I know. Cozy in it looks that. super cosy in there. I know. I'd be quite happy you jumping in there. He's probably a dirty old man. Stop it, you. Behave. <laughs> hey, do you want Auntie M to jump in for a cuddle? <laughs> hey? Bet you do, you monkey. A few hours later, anxious owner Tracy has arrived at Isleworth to collect her little man. Hello. Yeah. I was worried about Domino all day today. He was just in the back of my mind all the time. And I couldn't wait to finish work to come and collect him. Domino, look who it is. Hello. There's Mummy. Hey, yeah. Hi, Dom Doms. How are you? For such an old boy, he's uh, woken up brilliantly. Surgery went very well. Uh, he no longer has a thyroid gland on the left side, but hopefully now Hello. he'll have a life without tablets, which would be great. Oh, that'd be wonderful. <laughs> hey, babes. Mm. Oh, I missed you today. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm really pleased that everything went well, and I can't wait to watch him put on some weight and just chill out and be happy. All right, buddy, you ready to go? Oh. All right, Trace. Thank you Take very care. much. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye, Come Domino. on, Dons, let's go.
Hey, Hi, Tracy, hey, how hello. are you? Come Good to see you. In. Thank you very much. It's time for Scott to check up on Tracy and his patient Domino. Hello, handsome. How are you? Wow, Tracy's looking amazing. He is, isn't he? Yeah. He's put on lots of weight. Domino looks fantastic. He's much calmer. His coat looks better. He just looks great. Uh, big sook, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Two weeks after Domino's surgery, you could see a huge difference in him. He stopped crying for food and become a lot happier. And are you finding that he's a little bit quieter as well? Because they're pretty vocal hypothyroid cats. Oh, he's much quieter. Um, we can eat dinner in peace without him singing all the way through. Domino's always been an affectionate cat, but now he's even more so. For such an old cat, I think he's got a new lease of life. Where he'd stopped purring, you could tell he was unhappy, and now he purrs all the time. Oh, isn't that great? So he's actually, he's found actual happiness. He has. Yeah. You can see he's a lovely, healthy cat now. Trace has been an incredibly brave owner. For any cat owner to put a cat that's as old as Domino through surgery is always fairly daunting, but we've got a fantastic result in this cat is now comfortable, he's happy, he's relaxed, and he's enjoying his company again with Tracy, so it's a fantastic result. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek. If you love our show and want to see more amazing stories from the Bondi Vet team, just hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you for our next video. On a busy freeway, a Bondi Vet camera crew are caught up in traffic chaos. A mother duck and her babies have taken a tragic wrong turn. People are just stopping, cars are stopping, there's people jumping out of their cars and just scrambling around the cars trying to catch these little ducklings. In a panic, the mother duck flies off, abandoning her ducklings. One right under your car here. Now orphaned, it's imperative the chicks are caught and brought to safety. Jeez, one just went under a car. Oh, it's out the other side, I think. Come on, out that side. Jeez, so quick. This is crazy. Right now, legs on this up. The Good Samaritan couple are now taking nine ducklings to the nearby Sash Hospital. Sadly, there has already been one casualty. No, one got run over. There's nine birds, one of them was hit by the car. If you could just come up and, and have a look, please, that would be appreciated. After a frantic rescue mission, Alicia and David have just arrived at Sash with the nine orphan ducklings. One other chick died on the motorway. Oh, I love animals, so it's, it's hard. <laughs> Definitely. Hi, little guys. Look at you. Emergency vet Lisa Chimes now needs to check over the babies for any serious injuries. So remarkable that this couple stopped their car in the middle of a freeway, jumped out and tried to rescue these little ducklings. I mean, they could have endangered their own lives. We couldn't have left them there. We wouldn't have forgiven ourselves if we did. I'm looking for signs of head trauma, feeling their limbs and seeing if they've got any breaks in their wings and their bones. I mean, if these ducks are so tiny and so fragile that if they came into contact with a tyre or a car or anything on that freeway, they would not have stood a chance. So you did good. Look at them, nine out of ten. And it's thanks to you. I think it's um, an amazing effort. Thank you so much. Come on, little guys. Thank you. We don't actually get ducks here very often, so I've raided the fridge and stolen someone's lettuce for their lunch. This is service. I don't even cook like this for myself. Chopped it up finely, soaked it in water, and that's what they're going to get until I can find some proper duck food. Oh, <laughs> I love that. Oh, my God. I've asked the nurses here if they can look after the ducks, but the hospital's full, we're busy, been told Lisa, take them home, keep them warm and bring them back alive tomorrow. No pressure. We're going on the freeway. At this time, you're going to be strapped in. You 
be good in the car, little duckies. Hello. Hi. Look what I've got. This day for the night. What the? In the bathroom. Why? It's a big surprise for Lisa's husband, Brad, and their four-legged family, Nelson and Lucas. Nice to the baby duck. Love him. The dogs got one look at the cage. I let them meet their new brothers and sisters. And then Nelson licked his lips, and that was it. <laughs> the boys are staying here. Wait there, wait. Just wait, just wait. We'll come back to you in a second. I don't want to stress the ducks out too much, so the dogs have been banished, and they are not happy. He loves you. Yes. Oh, my goodness, uh. Brad. <laughs> I don't know if Brad's cut out to be a father just yet. He's not coping very well. How many of these he are there? Loves you. We've got nine babies, Brad. Lisa. What? They've gone under the sink. Yeah. Don't know if this is so good for the marriage. Brad, what are you doing? You're meant to be watching them. There they come. No, 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 no. Not oh. on the bed. Go to bed. Everyone to bed. Come on, kids. In you go. Bedtime! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Bedtime! They'll be all right, Brad. Don't worry. They'll be okay. Nine. So I'm a little bit sad. My little family's going. Aww. It was fun while it lasted, hey, buddies? Lisa's nine orphans have made it through the night. Hello. Now she's reluctantly handing them over to the experts. We're lucky we've got some babies in care at the moment with an adult. Okay. So we'll just add them to the brood. I think there'll be 19 babies with one adult. You're cute. Oh, that's how you thank me. <laughs> hey? Surrogate mums, they can't count. Another nine ducklings, no problem. All right. Good Thanks luck. very much, Lisa. Let me know what happens with them. Absolutely, and we'll be in touch. Maybe when we release them? Hopefully. OK. Take care. See you later. Bye. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. I'm actually looking forward to a good night's sleep tonight. Yeah. Good luck to him. I can't wait for you to see them, Lisa. Yeah. They've grown so much. Can't wait to see them as well. And wow, what a spot for their new home, huh? Lisa has caught up with Neil from the rescue group Wires to say goodbye to the baby she took in eight weeks ago. They don't look much like babies anymore, Lisa. Well, they're ready to go. I've definitely stirred the pot here. I've been thinking about these little guys for the last few months, wondering how they're doing, and I'm so excited to see how big they've grown and to hopefully set them free in the water where they belong. Here we go. Oh, my goodness. Oh, look at That's that. That's amazing. It's beautiful. Wow. Come on, little one. <laughs> Bye.